You know what we haven't done yet? We haven't done any miter saw hacks, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Before we go over to the saw, I want to do a quick reminder, if you haven't already subscribed, I invite you to do that. Uh, click that little notification bell, and let's get over to the miter saw. So this is a sliding miter saw, and the reason it's a sliding miter is because it slides, it, it can slide into the wood. If this were a chop saw, it would only go up and down. And what I'm going to show you are some systems that you can use on either one of these saws. Now when you're using a chop saw, very often you're doing repetitive cuts. And what that means is that if you use something called a stop block, and this is what a stop block looks like. Now this is a stop block. Now you can use any old piece of wood. I don't do that because I like to have a little cutaway down here and the purpose of that is you will always get sawdust on the face of this and when you get sawdust in the corner it's very hard to get out unless you do this little cutaway. Let me show you. So there's that stop block, there's the sharp side, there's the side with the cutaway. Now when I put that on there and when I put a little bit of sawdust in there, watch what happens. It the, when you try and move that block up there, see there's a gap in there. So then when you try and move that sawdust away, and I'm just flicking it away with my finger, what happens is it still doesn't butt properly. But look what happens when you use the cutaway. Even when you put sawdust in there, if I can get enough in there, and even when you butt it, look at how much sawdust I've got in there, and it's still, even there, it's still almost butting up there. But look at it, it's so much easier to get that away, and even if there is sawdust left, look at that, it still butts up nice and clean. So it's just a much quicker, better way cutting that little notch out, and having this handy will make sure that your wood is always going to be able to get butted up so that you get proper lengths cut. And so the way you attach these, basically you just clamp them to the fence of your saw. Uh, and if you've got bar clamps, I've got a hole in it in case I want to use one of these bar clamps. But you know what? I'm finding I prefer my little clamps. And remember, we talked about cutting your clamps and putting your own little knob on the top of it. Uh, and here's another perfect example of where that works so nicely. You don't have to worry about the, the bars getting in the way. It's quick and easy. Uh, and now you've got a perfect way of clamping wood to get replicated good results. From time to time when I'm cutting wood, sometimes I cut it a little bit long on purpose and sometimes I accidentally cut it just a little bit long, just a hair. And I like to get a nice tight fit. And the way you can do that, rather than trying to cut a, a, a tiny bit of wood off by slicing down like that, the other thing you can do is bring your saw blade all the way down, take your wood and butt it up to that, then turn your saw on and slowly let the saw, the carbide in the blade, will just graze the end of that wood. And let me show you exactly what it does. See that? And that just took that pencil off of there and it just glazed the end of it just to shave a very, very small amount off so that if you were making a, need to make a perfect cut, that's one of the ways to do that. Very often when you're cutting dowels on a sliding miter, what will happen is when the blade touches the dowel, it will often spin and for most people, it startles them. I know it always startles me because I'm, I'm not always expecting it. But what I've learned is that if you make a little V block and all that's all this is, is just a scrap piece of wood with a V cut in it. Now, I should tell you, this is not a 45 degree angle in here. What I found that is if you make that a little bit less, I think this is about a 60 degree angle in here. Um, it it actually tends to grab the doweling better so that when you do want to make a cut, it doesn't roll on you.
and you can make nice crisp cuts. One of the things I get asked a lot is after you've made a cut, why do you wait for the blade to stop before you let the the mechanism come back up? And there's a few reasons. Uh, first of all, it's just a safety a habit that I learned a long, long time ago, and it's just stuck with me. Uh, but very often I'm making rep, 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 repetitive cuts, and I, for example, I may have a stop block here, and I'm running up to it. And when you cut that, if you don't let the blade stop, if it's still spinning, when the blade is spinning and it comes back up, very often it can throw out this piece of wood that's in here. Sometimes it will actually move your stop block and you might not realize it. And when it throws this piece of wood out, sometimes it will gouge it at the same time. And you know when you're doing really fine cuts, uh, banding and things like that, um, or any kind of a fine cut, you don't want your wood to be gouged doing that. It only takes a second to wait for that blade to stop, uh, and that way you get a safer and you get a finer repetitive cut each time. And speaking of doing banding or fine work, whatever kind of fine work you might be doing, um, cutting little pieces like this that eventually will get glued together, uh, what I need is something from time to time that will hold my wood on the miter saw. And I just made up this little clamp and I move this little clamp around from time to time depending on the jig that I'm using. And for on the miter saw, it holds the wood nice and firm so that I know it doesn't ha doesn't isn't going to move around, and I can go ahead and make a cut with that. Well, that concludes my video for today. I hope you found some interesting things in there that you might be able to use in your workshop or maybe improve on some of the things that I've made. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.